Bom dia, good morning to you all. I would like to thank Rita Marquez for her great work and valiant efforts in producing this amazing online seminar with translations for Latin American AV archives, Obrigada. The Fiat IFTA Media Management Commission specializes in current and future trends in metadata and media management, focusing on new technologies and changing roles and skill sets. We organize a biannual Fiat IFTA Media Management Seminar for AV archives all over the world. This joint presentation with Ava Lee Screen, National Library of Sweden, was given at the Stockholm Seminar last year to look at the trends and evolutions that media archives have experienced over the past years. So here is our journey. We have had several seminars in different locations, London, Amsterdam, Vienna, Stockholm, Toronto, Hilversum, Glasgow, Rio de Janeiro, and Lugano. So the first, our very first seminar was in London in 1998. And the main themes were digital workflows through production and documentation. We saw the birth of new workflows, new digital newsrooms, and the development of news and archive systems, prototype systems with uh, thumbnails and um, uh, new, new ways of cataloging. There was a new buzzword for uh, cataloging and indexing. It was metadata, a brand new buzzword. And at the seminar, a professor, Tan, from the University of Amsterdam predicted fully automated indexing in 20 years time, automatic tools to facilitate rather than replace human analysis. So that was well over 20 years ago. The next seminar, was in Amsterdam, media management in the digital era. We asked ourselves lots of questions. What are the consequences and effects of file-based production for the traditional archive process and for the archive's position in the organization? How will the role of the traditional AV catalogue change if it becomes part of production workflow? And what is the added value of the traditional AV cataloger in a, a domain of intelligent search engines and peer-to-peer -peer networks and user annotation? And finally, will automated in indexing eventually replace professional manual annotation and cataloging? And what's the future job for of the AV cataloger? and new roles started to emerge. The AV cataloger would become a media manager to manage content and metadata throughout the production process. A new role of ambassador of new technology, using expertise and knowledge of cataloging to support digital systems, media processes and production staff new role of media editor uh, emerged, repackaging archive for online, and a content specialist trainer to educate program makers on new technologies and information management, and also the role of the preservation of content. And our main conclusion was archives will be at the heart of production and archive expertise to set standards and monitor metadata quality. The next seminar was in Vienna. Still lots of questions. What is the goal of AV archives? Does technology improve the workflow? There were new relationships with IT teams. And some of them say it can set us free from manual tasks. Do we need to continue with neutral cataloging as we have new target groups. How do we tag, catalog, store and re reuse assets 
um, in a changing digital world? And more importantly, how do we train and prepare the archivist, media manager for their expanding role? New roles in 2007 continued. Media managers for TV, radio, online, interactive. Ambassadors with specialist skills of communication, metadata and workflows. The changing role of the cataloger with new target audiences, production and public access. And content specialists for long term preservation. The new role of ingest operator came with digitization, new digitization processes and quality control, and also a new role of data and systems manager. So there would be greater collaboration with production teams. The next seminar was in Stockholm, keeping your best content and metadata. It was acknowledged that missions are different between broadcast and national archives, small and large companies. But we looked at the definitions. What is selection? What is retention? What is everything? Do we keep it? Do we select it? Do we re retain it? Not selecting before was destruction. Not selecting now, it will still exist somewhere and be accessible. But what to keep? Is it quality before quantity? Is it better to keep 10 well-documented programs or clips rather than 20 bad ones? There is a new paradigm. Keep everything and find and select later. A US professor, Lev Manovich, gave a presentation on a new data mining society. There would be a new digital divide and we need to balance social and cultural best practice. Do we keep some garbage because only 10 to 20 percent of what is kept is searched or reused? And metadata, hot topic now. Archiving is no longer at the end of the production chain. Production staff will be inputting metadata early in the production process. And there would be a need for quality criteria for metadata. And everyone agreed that the validation of metadata authenticity should be in the hands of the archivist. Also, there were new search tools assisting in the creation of metadata speech to text, scene detection. But we realized the technology was still not perfect and still required professional human interaction. More metadata in the future, we needed to understand the user, the right context, rich media navigation techniques and improved search techniques will increase the findability. And sustainability. Do we delete excess metadata or do we delete because of lack of metadata? Very interesting questions at the time. The next seminar was in Toronto in 2011 with still ongoing themes. Metadata, user generated metadata, tagging and the emergence of social media. At that time, there were new preservation formats, HD, multimedia. We discussed storage in the cloud, cloud computing, but can we trust the cloud? At the time, no one trusted the cloud. And the emergence of new media, multi-platforms with web archiving. CBC in Canada, we're creating new online news solely on the web. So the archives had to archive exclusive web online footage. So again, there were many pilots and changing roles. In 2013, the seminar was in Hilversum in the Netherlands. Again, looking at metadata as the cornerstone of digital archiving. 
there were new media managers, social media and new multimedia platforms with Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, big data and more and more metadata driving audiences and key, key access. Artificial learning was a new concept in 2013. Um, now today we talk about AI, but in 2013, there were various uh, universities studying computer auto-generated accurate sentences. In the BBC, we were researching classification by mood where you could search for clips that were happy, sad, funny, and serious. This was a new concept. And then there was speech to text with auto tagging of TV and radio content. In the BBC, the World Service Radio Archive was not very well catalogued, very little catalog. And they developed a system to actually automatically catalog from speech to text. And over 70,000 programs were digitized and tagged automatically. This was in 2013. Another concept was crowdsourcing, where crowdsourcing was used to catalog. In the Netherlands, they experimented with various projects to get the public to catalog the content. And also we saw the emergence of the second screen with new inter interactive formats. And this drove more proactive archiving, more content, more channels, more interactive and more proactive archiving. So will catalog catalogers be needed in the future? Some of the conclusions was metadata is not interesting. It is what you do with it that is interesting. We also say that it opens the eyes of the documentalist to see what technology can do. And we must bridge the gap between archives and IT, as there are many cultural differences. We asked ourselves the question, who is really responsible for metadata input? Archivists, documentalists, production, or users? What is the archivist's role in the future? We had to redefine roles in a new landscape of multimedia. In 2015, the seminar was in Glasgow in BBC Scotland. And the focus was second generation MAM systems and metadata. We looked at case studies of various second generation media asset management systems in archives. We looked at changing roles of the cataloger, a new role of data file wrangler with new formats and post systems. And we realized that the media industry needed to understand the archive needs. Industry was providing new MAM systems, but they needed to understand what the archive requirements were. There was more necessity for more automatic processes. And more importantly, we had to train staff in a file-based world. And also, with new social media activities, we had to educate our archive staff as well as production. So what are the biggest challenges in changing workflows in 2015? Change is constant. Staff must embrace new technology and IT. There are many new skill sets and the new concept was there would be a new archivist is a coach, um, a football analogy of teaching, training, who is buying good players and systems. The archivist must be involved in the whole process. There was much organizational and change management for journalists, 
production entering metadata. And some of our industry partners said, leave search to a competitive algorithm. Let the algorithms do the search. This was in 2015, and only today we are looking at AI. And what will the future broadcaster be in the future with a cultural heritage and reuse responsibility? In Lugano 2017, we looked at the concept of embracing automation to enhance discoverability, findability. We looked at various case studies integration and interoperability of cloud-based systems, transformation to microservices. And we spent an afternoon looking at sports production archives and all the challenges of near live logging and publishing on multi-platforms, using new systems to automatically live log and also the automatic metadata generation was key for live, live programs of sports and news. So there were more conclusions. Integration of new tools in MAM systems and workflows. There were many speech to text, speech recognition pilots with positive results. YLE conducted various speech-to-text pilots, but the results confirmed that the role, as a, the role of the archivi, archivist, is a machine teacher to provide quality assurance and be a curator of metadata. We asked, will automation replace human work? But we realise. Automation is not perfect yet, and it's not archive specific. So it would enhance the role of the archivist and the documentalist and the researcher. We needed to re-engineer and ev the, make an evolution of roles in workflows. And we needed to train in new skills, perhaps even coding and programming which is a complete change from the traditional role of the cataloger. And we asked ourselves, archive, can archive staff be free to be more creative for data manipulation, curation, and collection building? Automation, AI, new systems, new process could help us to be more creative and do more different tasks. So in summary, I am presenting Ava Lise Green from the National Library of Sweden's summary, which we gave in Stockholm last year. So the archive before digitalization was the analog collection, physical carriers, the old catalog with old cards, and also the old cataloging rules and classification. However, we realize we still need old skills today. How has the workflow changed? In the 80s, the catalog moved to a database instead of paper. In the 90s, we could send information between databases. In the 2000s, there was deeper system integration. And in 2010, automation, the decade of 2010 to 2020, big data, linked data, AI. So 20 years ago, the digital archives started to appear and there were a new set of buzzwords and archiving terminology, archiving process, metadata, video files, taxonomies, tagging, media management, metadata models and templates and exchange formats. There are new archiving processes. 
And we asked ourselves, was it possible to input in different ways, input metadata from different sources? And who would do this? Would it be production? It could be users. Viewers and listeners, maybe they could add metadata. Machines, automatic input of metadata. Or just the archivist and documentalist or a combination. So then we looked at audiovisual archivist roles. The generalist, as opposed to the specialist. And we needed to rethink skill sets. Competencies for a new, new uh, generalist would be to understand the new media landscape, non-linear, the knowledge of the company or the institution's mission and process. We needed to understand the user's needs. Be familiar with file-based content and technology. And descriptive metadata was in a new context with metadata models and structure, different metadata types, taxonomies, controlled vocabulary, new definitions, tagging, keywords, authenticity and integrity. And the metadata specialist would become the evaluator and quality controller of metadata input, an information metadata architect an educator and provider of rules and guidelines, and a mediator between users and IT technology. More skills and roles were needed. A content curator, data curator, archive logistics, file specialist and media manager, preservation and migration strategist, and finally, we need to get ready for the touch generation, the future generation. So I say thank you, Obrigado. And I want to actually uh, say that this presentation will be published uh, in a new book of the Stockholm Seminar, and it will be available free on the Fiatift website within the next two to three months. So thank you, obrigado.